Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Avast Free Antivirus, one of the most popular AVs out there. I think they claim to have the largest cloud network or something like that. So they do have a ton of users and a fairly decent UI. Now usually when it comes to how a product is presented or marketed, I'm quite agnostic about that. This is usually something I leave to user preference. Unless there is something really atrocious that needs to be talked about, and I think with the vast that is the case, and I'll tell you why. When it comes to the basic product UI, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, given that this is a free version and they do have a premium version available, I'm not surprised that they want to market it. I'm perfectly fine with that. But some of the borderline scareware tactics that they use to convince their users to upgrade is where I have a problem. I mean, I can even excuse this uh, this little gift wrapper, but the real problem is when you do a smart scan. So first it scans for browser threats, which I think is perfectly fine. Then it scans for outdated apps. Then it does a scan for viruses and malware, which is what you probably think the scan is supposed to do. But the last bit here, advanced issues, is where it gets dicey. So let's see what happens. No browser threats, no outdated apps, no viruses and malware. And keep in mind, this is a brand new install of Windows. So this is a perfectly safe system to use. But we have three advanced issues. Three primary folders are vulnerable to advanced ransomware. You have only basic firewall and you can see how everything is in red and it kind of gives you the idea that something is wrong and it needs to be fixed. And let's see what the solution is. If we click on resolve all, boom, there you go. It just wants you to buy a two-year subscription to a vast premium security. That's the only solution apparently to your advanced issues. It doesn't even give you an option. There's no option to go back, right? We just did a scan and now it's to your subscription, continue. The only way to get out of this is to actually hit X. And even then it's persistent. It's still like, here's your free trial. And I'm like, no, I don't want a free trial. So two X's later, we're back to the same menu. Oh, and it did it again. There you go. You're not imagining it. Your PC is getting slower, which is just objectively wrong, right? This is a brand new install of Windows. It's not getting slower. It's as fast as the hardware is going to allow it to be, but apparently not. Apparently it's no secret that computers get slower with time. Well, that's not true. And then let's click on show me. And again, a vast cleanup resolve to your subscription. Now I'm not saying that a vast cleanup product is bogus. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it just gets rid of temp files, does some basic optimizations, but especially for a security product, I just think this kind of behavior is a non-starter for me. Like I personally would not use the product based on this. Now that we've gotten over all the pop-ups, oh my goodness, look at how many times I have to click to get away from it. And the biggest problem with that is, as an advanced user, I'm not going to panic if I see those three red things on my screen. But people who are um, not as tech savvy, not as used to looking at different security products or different software in general, they're going to panic and they're going to buy their premium subscription. Not because they feel like they need the extra firewall or anything, just because they're greeted with these three red things when they download an AV and they think their computer is infected or worse. I just think to mislead people who are not as aware like that is just, um, it's ethically wrong. And I'm sure there are people who disagree. I'm sure there are some people who think that's perfectly fair and fair enough, right? You're absolutely entitled to your opinion. I'm just stating mine. But now let's go ahead and test it against some malware and see how this product actually holds up. So as usual, I will be using my Python script to automate the testing. So we've got uh, Malix on the desktop. For those of you guys who are new to the channel, the way I do my testing is I grab a bunch of files, which we're going to do right now, most of which were collected in the last couple of hours. I disabled the product for a short window of time just to make my life easier so it's not popping off with like 200 alerts when I'm trying to drag the folder. But once that is done, we will actually run this script, which is going to automatically go through these files, start a new process for each one of them independently, and figure out how many of them were blocked by the AV. And based on that, we get a final proactive detection. And then we're also going to go through the system and try and figure out if there are any active malware were samples that we can detect. So let's get started. First, of course, I will re-enable the product. Let me first show you that. We have 17, 13 items in here. There's probably ransomware, Trojans, PUPs, all sorts of stuff. Now we will turn the shields back on. And now that we're all good, yep, yeah, all good. 
we will go ahead and execute the script. Is real-time protection turned on? Let me just double check just to be sure. And indeed it is. So we'll say yes to that. Let the testing begin. So far so good. Looks like Avast is catching stuff with its signatures. This is the typical file detection alert. It's moving stuff to quarantine and I guess we'll get plenty of these as the task goes on. Now future Leo will likely speed this process up for your convenience so you don't have to sit through the whole half an hour or whatever it takes for this to run completely. But we'll see at the end how many misses we have if any at all. Woohoo, looks like we finally got a sample that's not caught by the signatures. This one is being analyzed. It's supposed to take 15 seconds. I'm not sure if this is the uh, cyber capture or what component it is because it doesn't say that. Well, apparently passed. So sorry for the wait. The application was started. So we have our first miss. Of course, I don't necessarily think that every sample in this collection is malware. It's possible that we have some false positives, which is why the most important thing in these tasks is the clean sheet metric, which is what we'll figure out at the end of the task. We'll try and see if there are any active infections on the system. But it does seem we do have a couple of files at least that have uh, made it past the file guard. I think one was executed inside cyber capture. Vast does employ a lot of different techniques proactively to block malware. I think they do some kind of sandboxing as well, but we'll only see how effective it is at the end of the test. Looks like Vast deep screen blocked a threat, so that's great. So there you go. We do have a threat that was not blocked by the false signatures, but blocked by some of the other proactive defenses. That is always good to see, because threats do evade false signatures sometimes, and then these components do come into play. Woohoo, looks like test is done. 1713 false executed and a proactive detection of 99.36%. I'm actually quite impressed and sur pleasantly surprised by this result, especially given that there have been several instances in the past where I've tested a vast where it's just been blatantly bypassed by ransomware. So now I can already tell that there are no major active malware processes, not much executed really. I mean, apart from a couple of files, even then, like some of the malware that did make it past the signatures was actually analyzed by the deep guard and uh, quarantined afterwards. So the results look really good. We have nothing new in startup. So I'm just going to restart the system, go through the due process, but I doubt that we're going to find anything. But hey, we'll never know until we reboot the system, clean out the temp files, get rid of uh, the folder on the desktop, and do some second opinion scans. And as I suspected, looks like the system is quite clean. Well, clean as far as we can tell. Hitman Pro detected a few tracking cookies, but that's about it. This is obviously a false positive. It's just the uh, VirtualBox uh, display driver. So there you have it. That's actually a very solid result by Avast. It's a clean sheet. No denying it. There's uh, no arguing with results. And honestly, if not for some of their tactics, I would probably be okay recommending this product. Of course, uh, this is only one test and um, I think only consistent performance and repeated tests kind of tells you how good a product really is. 
But so far, so good. And I'm really looking forward to testing this product again in a few months' time to see if it can still hold up. And if we start seeing results like this, well, I mean, I guess it's a really solid product. But for now, this is it for this video. Please like and share if you enjoyed it. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.